Pastor Joe has been doing this um this series on Cage, and uh, I'll be I'll be a fool to get up here and talk about something else, you know. And uh, in this series of 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 um being uncaged, I, I don't know about you, but I've been since he started it, I've been in cages, out of cages, 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 and don't 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 freak out when you when you hear things about being uncaged and then you find yourself in cages because now you have the ability, you have the tools what, what, to, to, to get out of these cages. So I didn't, I didn't count it nothing but joy when I found myself dealing with depression over the, over the last month when I found myself dealing with anxiety, regret and guilt. I said, I already know what to do. So I've been in cages this series. I've been out of cages. On, sun, on Sunday, I get uncaged. On Wednesday, I'm back in cages. Like, oh, God, what I, and I just go back to what Pastor Joe's been telling us all over, all over this week, all over. So uh, I'm just going to fall into this, the same, the same exact vein. Before I get started, I just want to qualify the room real fast. Oh, yeah, and thank everybody for joining us. YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, thank everybody for joining us also. But I just want to just qualify the room real fast because I don't want to talk to people that don't. They don't, they don't need it. All right. So real quick, how many of us in here are self-confident? Just raise your hand. Self-confident. Okay. We have a whole lot of people that's not self-confident. Okay, cool. Okay. How many people in here uh, are not easily influenced? Like, you, like, like if I come up with something in my head, you can't change it. Anybody? Okay, cool. Everybody ain't raising their hand on that either. I'm going to get everybody on this. Okay. How many people in here... That if your life was threatened, do a fight back. Cool. I knew everybody would raise their hand. Raise their hand. So we got people in here that have the ability to fight. Have a lot of people in here that have the ability to fight. I have a lot, and we have a whole lot of people in here also that uh that also has self confidence, self assuredness, uh, not easily influenced. Not easily influenced. Third, can you come here quick? Come here quick. Hurry up, bro. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Hurry up. Hurry up. Hurry up. Hurry up. Hurry up. Come here quick. Come here quick. Not easily influenced. Got another, I got a, just another question. Got another question. I want you to have your natural reaction, okay? Your natural reaction. I, I, I want your natural reaction. What would you do if I came and tried to put you into this cage? What would you do? You see what he's doing, right? You see what he's doing? What would you do? If I naturally came, all right, cool, 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 cool. I naturally came. What would you do if I naturally came and tried to put you in the cage? You see what he did, right? How old are you, third? Seventeen. Joe, come here quick. I know you. I know you're doing that. Joe, Joe come here quick. Just, just want to try something out. Just want to try something out. I said we got a lot of people in here that are self-assured. Uh, a lot of people in here that are not easily influenced. Everybody raised their hand when I asked if somebody was threatening your life, what would you do? Now, Joe, nice guy. Joe was the nicest guy I ever met. But watch this. And what if I, what would you do, Joe, if I tried to put you into this cage? If I tried to put you into this cage, fighting me back. Thank you, Joe. How old are you, Joe? 24. 16, 24. Pops, come right quick. Pops, come right quick. 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 I'm, I'm preaching and, 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 and y'all ain't even getting it. How old are you, Pop? 56. 56. Seven, what, 16? 17, 24, 56. Pop's nice guy. But Dad, what would you do if I tried to put you in this cage? He gonna just go in there. Dad, you weren't supposed to, you, you weren't supposed to do that. Dad, right, but, I know. I know I was just going to but, yeah. but, but some of us won't fight yeah, right. and do it just it's just what my pops do. Thank you, Dad. Th thank you, Pop. So we all, we all have the ability to fight when we don't want to go somewhere. And we're in cages because some of us won't fight. Now, to me, the only way I'm going to get into that cage is that I put myself there. I don't care who talking to, I don't care, Pastor Joe, 
uh, Vic, Ricky, my pops, Jojo, Third, Antoine, Antoine, Coach Green, all the men in the church, John can come up here and try to put me into this cage. But I don't care how many people come up here. I'm not getting into no cage unless I put myself there. So I grew up in uh, one of my favorite TV shows, top five TV shows. We ain't top five no more because Scandal done took the place of that. But uh, and I was walking around the house every now and again just singing and Erica like, Tony, shut up. You know what I'm saying? And uh, it go like, it's a rare condition this day and age to read any good news. In the newspaper a play. The love and tradition of the grand design. Some people say it's either. F favorite, favorite, favorite show. Family Matters. And, and, and there was this dude in the show, Steve Verkel. And Steve Verkel had this saying. And his saying was, did I do that? So for a topic today, I just want to talk to us about did I do that. Now, I qualified the room already, and everybody said that they would fight if their life was threatened, that, that, that you would fight. Cool. So, my question to myself that God's been dealing with me since Pastor Joe brought this thing, and, I, and God would feel like I'm stepping on your toes. Okay, cool. I'll be sitting right there after I preach. You can come step on mine. So, um, I'm wondering if I'm in cages because I put myself there. Because, uh, any other way, I'm going to fight back. So the outside of this cage, outside of this cage is freedom. Outside of this cage is confidence. Outside of this cage is every good thing in life. So I'm asking myself, what did I give up in exchange for this cage? What did I do to give up my confidence, to give up my freedom? to give up everything that made me who I am in exchange for that cage. Okay, I'll go there. Was it that, 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 that one night stand that I did, that I gave up everything that I had for that cage? Was it the Netflix and chill that I had to just go chill with her? Did I give my freedom up for that one night? Was it that class that I just had to skip? Did I give up my confidence for that one th day that I had to skip that class. Right. What did I do to give up my freedom, to give up my confidence, to give up everything that I had for that case? The Bible asks us, what would a man give in exchange for his soul? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And we exchanging a whole lot of things and don't even know that down the line is going to eventually put me into that case. All I was trying to do was go have sex with her. I didn't know that that would lead to depression. I didn't know that that would lead to anxiety. I didn't know that would lead to regret. All I was trying to do was have a good night at a good night at the club. I didn't know that that would lead to depression. I didn't know that would lead to addiction. I didn't know that would lead to lust. But I'm asking myself, what did I do to give up my freedom for this? And it ain't my mama's fault. See, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a just like, like Pastor John, I'm going I'm to just, just open the door and go on in there. A lot of us are in cages and we're blaming everybody else and everything else except for the one who put us in the cage. We all said that if our life was threatened, we would fight. But now that I'm in the cage of depression, I, I want to blame Pastor Joe. I want to blame my wife. I want to blame my daddy. I want to blame my mama. I want to blame my teacher. I want to blame everybody else but the person that put me in here. I'm not, I'm not using nobody else's testimony but my own. Okay? I chose to have sex unprotected. I chose to have the abortion. Now I'm in a cage of depression and want to blame everybody else but the person who had sex unprotected. Did, did, did I do that? Yes, sir. 
I chose again, Antoine, to have sex unprotected. She got pregnant. She wanted to keep it. I had to drop out of school to take care of my family. Now, I'm in a cage of regret and guilt, but I want to blame my wife for the reason why I ain't living life. And I want to blame my grandma and my granddaddy for telling me to get married when I, when I ain't really want to. But I'm the one that has sex unprotected. I'm the one that's the reason why I'm in this cage. Real quick, real quick, real quick, real quick. You won't get out of the cage until you accept accountability. Now, I ain't trying to bring no condemnation. I ain't trying to bring no judgment. But the reality of the situation is that I'm in cages that I put myself in. I want to blame I want to blame everybody else Joe yeah. <laughs> I want to blame everybody else uh, for the reason why I'm in these cages right. I don't I don't know who my real well, I, don't, I don't talk to my real pops I want to put I don't, I don't know things about me that's why I'm in this cage of lust and in this cage of no 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 you won't stop watching porn that's why you in the cage right. yes Freedom. Freedom. We, 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 we tend to get in cages and like Pastor Joe was talking about last Sunday and get comfortable in cages and think that this is just who I am and who I'm supposed to be and ain't no hope for me and get down in the dumps. But I come to just remind you who, who you are. In Genesis 1, round 26 20, 26, 25th verse. When God first thought of man, his initial thought of man was to have dominion and subdue. Your natural state is not a cage. Your natural state is to have dominion and subdue and be fruitful. And I'm not talking about having kids, but just be successful. Your natural state it's not depression. Your natural state is not addiction. Your natural state is not lust. Your natural state of life is not whatever you find yourself encaged with. Amen. Your natural state is to subdue and have dominion. So whenever I find myself inside of a cage, I am not in my natural state. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I'm the head and not the tail. That's my natural state. I'm peculiar. That's my natural state. I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. That's my natural state. And whenever you find yourself in the cage, you're not in your natural state. I often wonder how do they get these wild animals in, in cages. I often wonder how they get, I often wonder how they get these free, strong, confident lions in cages. I often wonder how, like, yo, like, man, I, how did it get that lion? That, that lion was, was in the wild, free. Freedom. That lion was in the wild, strong. That lion was in the wild, ready to kill, do whatever he had to do to survive. And now this big lion is in the cage. I often wonder how they did that. And when I was doing some research, what they do is that these people come out and they, um, they lure the lion off away from what would protect him. Y'all don't even, I'm preaching and y'all don't even know it. They, 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 they lure the lion off from what would protect them. And once they lure the lion off from what they think that would protect them, they use this thing called a tranquilizer gun. And in this tranquilizer gun, Antiquilla, it's, it's these little darts, these little bullets that's, that's, that's either filled with uh, a sedated drug or a uh, comatose drug or a paralytic drug. And, and what drugs do, these drugs, 
either if it's sedated, it takes him away from his natural state. It takes the lion away from his natural state because it got lured away from what will protect him. So they shoot the gun at him and either it'll, it'll, it'll sedate him or, or comatose where he's unconscious or paralyzed, paralyzed where it can't move. And then the next thing he know when it wakes up, <laughs> he's in a cage. Now, my grandma would tell me that that sin will make you stay longer Same. than you want to stay. Yes, sir. Sin, sin will make you pay more than you want to pay. And I'll wake up and ask, why am I in this cage? Because it lured me away from what would protect me. And I allowed the tranquilizer to sink my soul. And now I'm unconscious. Now I'm paralyzed. Now I don't know what's going on. And then 10 months later, I'm addicted to sex. 10 months later, I'm a crackhead. 10 months later, I'm an alcoholic. And I want to blame everybody else but the person that got lured. I have the ability to kill an alligator, right? But an alligator has the strength to kill a lion. Bro, Antoine, do you know the best time to kill an alligator? It's right after it eats. Because when it eats, it gets paralyzed. When it eats, it gets this sense of satisfaction that it's paralyzed. And, I, and I'm wondering what kind of sin is giving you this sense of satisfaction that you're paralyzed and now you're allowing the enemy to open up the cage and put you in it did I did I did I did I do that did I do that did I, do that? Did I get satisfied with sex that it just paralyzed me and now I'm in the cage of depression because she ain't called me back <laughs> I'm in a cage of pride because I can have sex with everybody I'm in a cage of lust because I can't have sex with her I gotta have sex with her, her, and her I'm just satisfied that I'm paralyzed but my mama made me uh, my mama it's my, my wife on that I'm blaming everybody else except for the one that just raised their hand and said that your life was threatened I ain't tell you to raise your hand. You raise your own hand. That's you. You did that. If your life was threatened, you would fight. Right. <laughs> What's your favorite car, Nisha? Your favorite car? Any? Your dream car? Dream car? Black Jaguar. Black Jaguar. Do you know what happens to that black? And it's taken off the lot. Ooh. Oh, see, Nisi, I shouldn't ask Nisi because she know that kind of stuff. Dang. Dang, Nisi know that kind of stuff. <laughs> my, my favorite car, one of my, one of my dream cars, Range Rover Black on beige. That's what, that's what I just want, tinted windows. When I go get that Range Rover and I take that Range Rover off the lot, the moment I take it off the lot, it depreciates. Ain't nobody hearing me. Meaning that third... The money that I spent to get the car, wow. the moment, not, not, the moment you take it off the lot, the money that I spent, they won't take it back for it. Them $200 J's we wear, the moment them J's leave the warehouse, it depreciates. And we think we can leave our creator and still be have value. And you wonder why you can't have no favor. You wonder why where your favor went. You wonder why, where the, the great things happen. Because the moment you left your creator, you depreciate yourself. Story time. Story time. Story time. Story time. Story time. This is my testimony. I ain't talking about, about nobody else but Tony. Check this out. I used to work at, uh, I ain't going to say you used to work at, but I used to work at this place. Right? 
And uh, I tell this story all the time. Uh, my wife will probably be like, Tony, you stupid. But uh, I used to work at this uh, place, and when me and my wife had got separated, I had started to smoke weed again, like heavy. Like, I ain't talking about one or two blunts a day. I'm talking about about four, four or five, just got to be high. Got to gotta be high, heavy. So when I was at work one day, I had, on my, on my lunch break, I had a little clip in the car. And I went to the car, Joe, <laughs> to smoke the clip. You know what I'm saying? On my lunch break, you know what I'm saying? I smoke weed, go back, to do, and go back to work. So when I'm on my lunch break, I'm in the car smoking the weed or whatever. And this dude, I know the dude, we talk, we, we talk about sports all the time. He looked, I was like, yo, I said, all right, just come in. So I'm thinking he want to smoke the blunt with me. Uh, and so I'm thinking he want to smoke the blunt with me or whatever, right? So he gets in the car and I, he's sitting on the passenger side. I'm sitting in the, uh, in, the, in the driver's seat. He on the phone with his lady. He ain't asked me to hit the blunt, so I'm smoking the blunt. I'm looking this way, right? I'm looking this way. I, out of nowhere, turned and looked at him. And he was about to snort a line off my dashboard. So this is a true story. Out of my mouth, I said, what are you doing? He said, I'm about to snort. I said, what about me gave you the impression that that was okay for you to get in my car and do hard drugs? Like, what is it about, what is it about me that got you thinking I'm cool with that? He said, oh, my bad. I said, my bad, bro. I said, I'm smoking weed, bro. You, you tripping. I ain't doing all that. He said, oh, my bad, bro. So he get out of the car. He get out of the car. And I don't know about y'all, but I was, you know, Pastor Joe, two or three Sundays ago, talked about the prayer meetings. When I was little, I used to have to go to the prayer meetings, right? And I think, like, it really got on me. Because uh, God be, if I do something stupid, God, 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 God start talking to me. So he got out the car. And I put my blunt out. Third, I unlocked my car. Couldn't get out. I'm in the front seat. Ain't no child lock on it. Couldn't get out. I'm like, yo. I said, Tom, oh. I said, oh, here you go. Because I knew it was God. Here you go. He said, Tony, you asked him what he thought you was. He, 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 you asked him what about you gave the impression that you allowed that. He said, a fool saw a fool. So the fool did anything he wanted to do around the fool. And the moment you took yourself away from me, you depreciated yourself. And now anything is possible to happen around you. So, so I was like, dang. I was like, dang. And I tell that story all the time. My friends always laugh like, dang, bro. Like, because it's like, you got my crackhead or something? No, he so a fool. Because I left a lot. And de-appreciated myself. <laughs> de-appreciated myself. De-appreciated, devalued myself. And and Joe, people, I, when, when when God showed me this example or whatever, I told, I said, God, I said, look, man, I said, these the, the cars on the lot still got to experience like life or whatever, right? They still got to experience life. And God told me, He said, Tony, the same sunshine your car get, the same sunshine the car on the lot gets. The same rain that your car gets sitting out there is the same rain yes, that the cars at the lot get. And, and, and the same seasons that your car sees is the same seasons yes, that the cars on the lot sees. The same day, the same night that your car sees is the same night and day that the cars on the lot sees. But you want to have experience. I want to experience. And them cars is experiencing the same thing. Only difference is they with their creator. Only difference is they with their creator. And still valuable. Ain't nobody talking to me about nothing. Ain't nothing talking about doing nothing. They they still with their creator. And and we think that (laughs) I I I just be like, dang man, I'm 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 applying job after job. I can't get no calls back. And I had to say, did I leave my creator? Are they not seeing my value? Because they see me in this cage. Are they not seeing my value? Because they see me as an addict. And they see me as a druggie. And they see me as a de- God is always just depressed. I just, I just got a question. Did I, did I do that? Did, did I do that? 
Because I do that. You know, and it's like, dang, like, I know y'all sitting there like, dang, Tony, man, God, leave, bro. Like, I, this, this, this is too much, man. I, I, I mean, I got I to gotta do something. I got I to gotta offset the pressures of life with something. And, you know, Corinthians say, that's cool. You can have an escape. God will allow you to have an escape. You know, the pressures of life, I'm, I'm just being real. The pressures of life is, is real. That sometimes I just need to escape. You know? Especially now, you know, teenagers going to school, it's, 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 it's about the hair, the shoes, the clothes. It's all this pressure. And then, and then trying to add on, trying to live right for God, that could be a lot. I'm, 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 I feel you. I need an escape. You know, the everyday hustle? Get the girls. Go to girl. no, no. It's, it's, it's always something. And sometimes I just need... Bro, and so I just need a break sometimes, man. I just need to escape the, 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 the everyday hustle, the pressures of life. And God said, cool, he'll give you an escape. But I'm asking myself, Aquila, is did I put myself in these cages by escaping to the wrong things? Story time real quick. Story time. Okay. The Israelites, the children of Israel, the Hebrews was experiencing a phantom in the land. And because of this phantom, they escaped to Egypt. Okay? They were experiencing a phantom. To, to escape this phantom, to escape the situation, to escape the pressures of the phantom, they, they, they moved to Egypt, trying to escape the phantom. Everything was cool because they had Joseph. Joseph was a Israelite. Joseph was a Hebrew. He was a high priest in the courts with Pharaoh. So they had a, a connection to, 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 to be able to leave this phantom and escape and go to Egypt. Okay? Joseph died. They went to Egypt. Everything was cool. But then Joseph died. And when Joseph died, things started to change. A new Pharaoh took over. Uh -huh. And he started seeing how they start growing in numbers. And slowly but surely, the same place that they escaped to eventually enslaved them. Uh -huh. Ain't nobody hearing me. Ain't nobody hearing me. They were trying to escape a phantom, the pressures of the world. So to escape the phantom, they went to Egypt. And slowly but surely, the same place that they escaped to is the exact same place that they found themselves enslaved in. And I'm wondering, is the same place or the same things that I call myself escaping to, now I became a slave to? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm wondering, Joe, if that, when I wanted to escape the pressures of life and go have and use sex as my escape. I'm wondering, is that very same thing that I escaped to, it's now the same thing that I'm encaged in, that I'm enslaved to. Yes, sir. Habits are not hard to break. It's the habits that you form to deal with pain is the ones that's hard to break. Right. What are you talking about, Tony? When I was growing up in school, I stuttered and I was black. And in the 90s, being this black wasn't as popular. So I would get picked on. I couldn't talk, I would get picked on. So to deal with that pain, I escaped to anger. That wasn't my natural state. But to deal with the pain of everybody picking on me, I escaped to anger. Now, that was around like six, seven, eight years old. Now, at 27, I'm I feel like I'm enslaved to going off on everybody that say something to me. But I was just trying to escape the pain. And I picked up a habit that now has me in this cage. That if you say something to me, I'm going to knock. Ain't no, ain't no talk. I'm going to knock you out. Man or female. Yes. 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 All because I was trying to escape the pain of being bullied. I became a bully. 
Then I got older and realized that if, if I boost myself up, then what everybody say about me won't get to me. And that's a good thing, but I did it too much. So now I struggle with pride because I was just trying to form a way of escape to get away from the pain. I found out that if everybody knew that you got girls, you was cool. So I was trying to escape pain and I would have sex with anybody, girls, anybody. But for real, I was just trying to escape the pain of getting picked on. The pain of, of not feeling good about myself. So I overindulged in just having sex with anybody. And now it's things about me that I'm in cages. I'm, I'm crazy. I'm in the cage of craziness. I'm in the cage of laziness. I'm in the cage of all this stuff. All because I was trying to escape the pain. And if we're not in the same exact place that you escaped to, just like the Israelites, you will find yourself enslaved to. I was just trying to, I was just trying to escape the pain, man. I was just trying to escape the pressures of life. So I, so I started smoking. I was just trying to escape the pressures of life. So I started drinking. It was just gonna be one time. Grandma, I was just gonna, I was just gonna, we were just gonna have sex one time. And then she didn't call me back. Now I have low self-esteem. But I wanna blame everybody else for my low, low self-esteem. But the stem, the, the root of it is me having sex. Amen. We have to simply start escaping to the right things. Bye. Check this out. By permitting the peace of God to keep us. By renouncing whatever we're in cages in. By prayer and thanksgiving. By thinking on the right things. By keeping our mind stayed on Jesus. By using our spiritual weapons. By putting on the whole armor of God. By having faith in that God. By living in the spirit. And by not casting away our confidence. So, Tony, you said, okay, Tony, I get all that, bro. I get all that, I get all that, I get all that. But I'm still in these cages, bro. Like, I fail. Okay, I escaped to the wrong thing. I, okay, I get it. I, 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 I was trying to get away from the pressures of life. And I, what do I do? Now, our text reads, I ain't even get y'all my, my text. My, but our text reads Psalms 191, 71. And uh, the TPT version reads, the punishment you brought me through was the best thing that could have happened to me, for it taught me your ways. And I just stopped by to encourage somebody and tell them that God is going to use the very same thing that enslaved you to get you to your promised land. God is going to use the very same thing that you find yourself encaged with to get you to where he wants you to be in. It was good for me to be in the cage because he will use that very same thing to uncage me to where I'm supposed to be. The end game with God is always the promised land. God will lead you through the situation. Now, if you go and study the, 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 the story of the, the Israelites, in Genesis 13 and 15, or 15 and 13, I don't know which one is that. God told Abraham that his descendants was going to be in the promised land, but they was going to have to go through 400 years of enslavement. God already knew that they were going to escape to, the, to, to Egypt, and Egypt was going to capture them. God even told Jacob, Aaron, you know, yeah, Jacob, to go to Egypt. God told him to go. And they still got enslaved. 
whatever may have been your form of affliction, it was good for you. The design was kind-hearted. That's funny. The design that God had to put you in the cage was kind hearted. Uh -huh. The result will be your benefit. Uh -huh. This will be the experience sooner or later resulting from all the afflictions of the righteous. Anything that will lead a man to obey God is a blessing and favor. Whatever leads a sinner to, to secure his soul salvation is a gain to him. No matter what it may cost, no matter what he may be, no matter what the requirement is to give up, no matter what the persecution and troubles he may face, no matter what his suffering is, no matter how long he may suffer, God will use what you are enslaved with, what you are encaged with to free you. God is at work in the mess. God is at work in the mess. God is at work in the mess. The Bible is a Bible full of pain, heartache, Sickness, disease, fornication, all that stuff. And I said, God, why would you put all that stuff in the Bible? He said, Tony, because I wanted you to see that I'm at work in the mess. So while you're in your cage, God's at work in the mess. God will use what enslaved, oh, God will use what enslaved me to get me to the promised land. But, it's a but, I have to make sure that my pain pays me. Yeah. Yes, sir. What, you, what you mean, Tony? I, I can't waste my pain, Vic. I can't get out to go right back in. I got to learn his ways. He said the affliction was good because it taught me your ways. It ain't good if I ain't learning nothing. I got to let my pain pay me. If you ain't ever dated a fool, you spot a fool. Let your pain pay you. Pastor Joe talks about the big truck taking his little truck. It, it won't happen now. Why? Because he's letting his pain pay him. Right. Don't experience cages and then waste the pain. Don't experience stuff and you know how low it got you just to get out of it. And go right back. <laughs> See, I, okay, freshman year of college, yeah, freshman year of college, I had an abortion. I experienced the lows of that. I've experienced the depression of that. I was stupid and didn't learn from my pain. So, junior year, had sex, I had a baby. But if I would have learned from my pain, I would have got out and never went back. Learn from your pain. Don't, don't waste your pain. Let your pain pay you. You date a fool and then you're going to keep dating fools? Let your pain pay you. You bought that expensive house and it broke you? You're going to keep buying expensive houses? Let your pain pay you. You, you, you waste your money on, 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 on junk and, and, and now you're in debt? Let your pain pay you. You skip class and got an F. Let your pain pay you. Don't skip class no more. You didn't study and got an F. Let your pain pay you. Don't waste your pain. I'm in cages, JD, because I'm wasting my pain. I'm wasting my pain. I'm wasting my pain. Don't, don't, don't waste your pain. Don't make, don't, don't, don't waste your pain. Don't get right back out to get back in. Pastor Joe told us to RIP, R A R P, attack, resist, press on. Right. Then he told us, B N P, be ready, no distractions, press on. Right. But I can't press on if I ain't attacking and resisting. Right. I can't press on if I ain't ready. I can't press on if I got all these distractions Amen. in my cage that I want to blame everybody else for. But uh, I did that. I did that. I did that exact resistance. In my closing, in my closing,
story time again and I'm done. Back in the day, we had a summer day camp at, uh, at the church. And uh, it was on Akron Drive. And we had uh, the slides, swings, and the, we, we had the whole nine thing. We had the slide, the yellow slide. We had the swings. We had the little basketball go, whatever, right? So one day at summer day camp, I was around like 12, 11 to 12. One day at summer day camp, we outside playing basketball. And uh, we playing 21. It's, it's all of us, me, Josh, Ryan, E-Man, all of us. We playing 21. I got 19, so I just need two more. I just need two more points to win. So uh, I don't know if it was Josh or Ryan. Josh or Ryan shot the shot. I got the rebound. When I got the rebound, I dribbled it out, dribbled it out, dribbled it out. So E-Man, E-Man, I love you, bro, wherever you at. I love you. E-Man comes to guard me, right? I got, I got, I got 19. I, got, I just need 21. E-Man comes to guard me. So I'm playing with him. He can't guard me. That's what I'm saying. He can't guard me. I'm playing with him. So I'm, I do something and come back playing with him. I do something again, come back playing with him. So he went from guarding me to where he got frustrated to where he hit me boom in my jaw boom my first fight I ever my, the first fight I ever got into so I'm dribbling and he hit me boom, I, boom. I'm like yo it hit me hard too but, but, but before the time I could react the uh staff grabbed me grabbed E-Man E-Man boom 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 and I remember it was Fred 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 you know you Fred we love you too I miss I, we, we want to see you Fred come put me in thing like Tony he hit you, bro. Hard, too. It was hard in my jaw. Boom! Hit me. <laughs> E-Man, wherever you at, I know where you at because me and you went to high school together. Wherever you at, I still remember that, bro. I, I love you. I love you. I love you. <laughs> I love you. But he, he hit me in my jaw hard, too. Boom! Hard. Boom! From that day on, I told myself, ain't nobody going to ever hit me. So now, I'm prepared to fight anybody, anywhere. Because I allowed that experience to teach me. Now, it wasn't whenever I got into a fight, I, I, I was always the first one to swing. You ain't gonna swing first on me because I learned from that pain. <laughs> if I was, my, see I'm preaching and y'all, my, my faith was so strong that honestly, when Pastor Joe was 500 pounds, I would try to fight him. Because I honestly believed that nobody could hit me as hard as he did. My faith grew so much that when he was 500 pounds, I would literally try to fight him. I, like when I said I did, I ain't lying, my family know. My faith was so strong from what I learned that in the face of a giant, yeah. don't encage me, bro. Yeah. I don't learn from my mistakes. So in the face of trials, you ain't gonna engage me, bro. I don't learn from my mistakes. So in the face of situations, you ain't gonna engage me, bro. I don't learn from arguing with my wife. That when the devil wanna make, make me argue with my wife, you not gonna engage me, bro. From going off with my daddy, that when I want to go off on my dad, you're not gonna engage me, bro. I'm gonna let my pain pay me. I'm gonna let my pain pay me. It was good that I was afflicted, cause it taught me your ways. It was good that I went through it, cause it taught me your ways. It was good that I had to experience it, cause it taught me your ways. Now God keep me in your ways. God keep me in your arms. God keep me away from everything. God 
keep me. I can't. God, be a fence all around me every day. Be a fence all around me every day. Be a fence all around me every day. loving grace your loving kindness that will allow me to be afflicted and still teach me your ways God we act at you right now get us out of all these cages and get us in the fence of your protection God we ask that you right now give us the ability to say no when we need to say no. To say yes when we need to say yes. God, we ask that you right now rain on us. Not only in the house of God, but when we go home, when we go to these schools, when we go to these jobs, God, I ask that you keep us. God, we thank you for your appearance on today from the praise team, to the dance team, to the offering, to Pastor Joe's mini sermon. We thank you for your experience on today. We do not take it lightly. And God, right now we say we won't allow our pain to be wasted. God, we are gonna learn from our pain. We are gonna learn from everything that we've done wrong. So I'll never do it again. God, we thank you. God, we love you. In your son's name we pray. Amen. What a word, what a word, what a word. You could be asking, what can I do just to be saved? The Bible says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. It's just that simple. All you got to do is confess with your mouth, believe in your heart that God has raised from the dead, and thou shalt be saved. If that's you, I want to pray with you. Father God, I thank you for the God just for each and every last person that has made made this open confession, Father God, and I pray for the God that your spirit, Father God, will come inside of them, Father God. Thank you for the God just for how you will, will um, become a fence all around them, Father God. I'm thanking you, thanking you for the God for how you will watch over them, Father God, and protect them as they grow in you, Father God. We thank you, we bless you, and we praise you, Father God. Here's our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, clap your hands, O ye people. God is good and, for, and he reigns forever. Amen. And it's just my prayer is that God be with you, God keep you, God bless you, and may we continually to live life in love. God bless and keep you, is my prayer. Thank you so much for joining us today. 
Please also consider joining us every Tuesday morning at 6 a.m. for our Morning Glory Corporate Prayer with Co-Pastor. Also, you can join us at 7 p.m. on Wednesdays for our refuel service. And please consider giving. Here are three ways in which you can give. Thank you so much again. And remember, we love you. See you next time.